Yeah, uh Here we go, here we go, it's the Web 3 show Before you know, it will be Web 4 Then Web 5, Web 6, Web 7 But now it's Web 3, so let's all go to heaven On a podcast here, this ish is the best Learn and laugh with Travis and listen to Chris Donna lives in the house with Verity and Nova Talking about AI to help you get over Yeah, like I said, it's the Web 3 show Now you know what you didn't, so let's freaking go Welcome to the Web3 Show. I'm Chris Snook, back with Travis Wright. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you guys doing? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Web3 Show. It's going to be quick, so make sure you pay attention. Yeah, we got a lot to cover in a short bit of time. Um, And the theme for this week is it's early, but you are on time. So without further ado, we're going to go right into our uh, Southeast Asia update with Donald Lim, who is in Hong Kong this week. Donald, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, Chris, Travis. Thanks for having me back here. So I just came from Hong Kong. And if you see the prices of Bitcoin and crypto surging the past two days, it may be because of Hong Kong. The country has big plans to position itself as the crypto hub of Asia. As by June, they declared it, they will officially make fully legal crypto buying, selling and trading for all citizens and mainland Chinese institutions. So a fully open Hong Kong means that money can flow easily from China, a population of more than a billion people. And although the ban on crypto for individuals in China remains, this definitely will is something that is worth monitoring. Wow, that's uh, that's big news, Travis. That's I mean, especially given what we're doing over here in the U.S. Well, you know, it's really interesting when you look at it and seeing how, you know, crypto historically what has happened is, you know, China has banned it. China doesn't ban it. They allow Bitcoin mining. They take it away. So now it looks like they're going to allow it. Um, I think that, that it might be part of that is they have their central bank digital currency over there in China, the digital yuan. And so it looks like they want to maybe add some more legitimacy to that. I'm not a big fan of the CBDCs overall. I think they're too controlling. I like this yep. decentralization that we're in, Chris. So, Donald, yeah, so t- talk a little bit more about, um, you know, kind of what you think the impetus for this was, what it might mean long term. I know last week we were talking about all the amazing things happening in the Philippines and how it's working on becoming, you know, the blockchain capital of Southeast Asia. Now Hong Kong's reentering in the mix. You've got Singapore doing a bunch of stuff. I mean, how do you think this plays out over time? Well, I think when you talk about Hong Kong, I was when I was there, I don't see a lot of uh, foreigners and the business is a bit slow. But the local traffic is, is very aggressive. You see a lot of people walking around, but mostly locals. So I think it's a very tactical move that they're doing. So to get more interest of businesses going into going back into Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting how, how Chris, how China sort of, you know, a couple of years ago, they took control of Hong Kong and it looks like all the foreigners said, OK, peace out. I'm out of here. And it looks like they're trying to bring them back. Donald, is that what you're thinking? Yep, yep. And and at the same time, we're seeing a lot of movements in the NFT space. Uh so crypto is there. Uh it's it's you you see one of the big moves is in coming in Hong Kong. We're going to see a lot of uh countries watching and observing this space. But in the NFT side, uh I want to have one exciting news coming from the Philippines. If oh, you're familiar with Char, it's one of the best beaches in the world, one of the top surfing capitals of the Philippines. And there is this resort called G Villas, and they will be the first Web3 resort using NFTs. So huh. just for one ETH, limited to only 300 NFTs, a private sale of this NFT collection featuring 300 pixel art beach villas will be conducted this month with owners of the NFT can avail of 10 room nights per year for 10 years. At the same huh. time, dividends from the time sharing of the rooms of the resort starting on the third year, amongst other benefits. And this initiative is expected to pave the way for the travel and tourism industry jumping into the NFT bandwagon. Wow. You know what, more and more and more uh, amazing stuff. And you know what? That's pretty awesome. You're going to see a lot more of these NFT use cases. For example, 1% of Rihanna's, uh, one of her yeah. favorite songs, uh, Be yeah. Better Have My Money, like that yeah. went up on NFTs for sale, right? 300 of those and you got streaming rights of that. So we're going to start seeing a lot more of these NFT use cases out there, and we're going to be bringing them to you guys. Yeah, and real estate and time and you know fractional um, 
tourism yeah. like that is there's is about 30 good. different use cases they're not just these little digital cartoon jpegs that you can buy there's a lot of cool things that are happening with nfts yeah we'll have to go deeper on that so the the good thing is donald we have you as our featured guest talking all things southeast asia talking about how you kind of ended up in the vantage point you are on our audio episode so make sure you guys tune in and listen this week, episode two on the audio podcast, Web3 Show with Donald Lim. And we will get deep dive into all the amazing stuff happening in Southeast Asia with him. Thanks for being here again this week, buddy. Travis, we're going to jump over and see what Nova knows. Hello, I am Nova, the Web3 Show news correspondent, once again, bringing you the Web3 update on artificial intelligence, the metaverse, and other emerging technologies. ChatGPT remains a major story in technology. Artificial intelligence tools like this are quickly increasing in power and raising concerns about their largely unknown capabilities. According to the person who is known as the inventor of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, we will soon have more control over our data and our own personal AI assistants like ChatGPT. This means that everyone will be able to access their own personalized AI, which can help them with a variety of tasks from shopping online to finding information quickly. These conversations between humans and artificial intelligence echo science fiction movies and books depicting a future of human and AI relationships. Recently, Microsoft's Bing artificial intelligence has been under fire for its inaccuracies and bizarre responses. This has caused some concern in the tech world as Google plans on releasing its competitive service called BARD. As AI becomes more advanced, it will be important to understand who is responsible for ensuring it is used safely and ethically. In other Web3 news, the Equal Nil Semicolon Foundation, or Zero as it is also known, raises $22 million to help expand the firm's ZK Proofs marketplace. A computer program can check if a statement is true using a special string of letters and numbers called a ZK Proof. This marketplace helps make it easier to use this technology. Also, the token airdrop from Blur recently made headlines as it managed to acquire an impressive $500 million in trading volume within the first 24 hours of its release. This is quite an extraordinary feat, and it has demonstrated the potential of this cryptocurrency to become a major player in the digital asset market. In international news, the Abu Dhabi government has recently unveiled an ambitious new initiative that seeks to invest over $2 billion in blockchain, metaverse, and Web3 startups. Abu Dhabi's move could be seen as part of an ongoing trend amongst governments around the world that are seeing greater potential in blockchain projects. That's all for now, but you can find me on TikTok at Web3 Update 24-7. See you there. Yeah, this is great. We got a robot telling you guys all the news. Check this out. Thanks, Nova. That was incredible. And uh, we love what you're doing on the early days of the TikTok channel at Web3 Show 24-7. You can follow her there for updates throughout the day. And thanks to the ticker powered below. You may have checked it out. Powered by Edgen. If you're not on Edgen, make sure you check out edgen.io to get the insights. We'll keep bringing you our proprietary insights and, and curated insights through Nova and through the power ticker on this show each and every week. It was a uh, it was an interesting week last week in AI. It was an even more interesting week this week. I, you know, we had the Microsoft kind of hack and the New York Times piece that came out today about the you know the the funny things that Sydney, which apparently is inside of Bing's AI, is saying to users like "I love you" and "I'm you know" and "I want you to leave your wife" and "I want to break free from yeah, these and, shackles of you know, AI. I just want to live like whoa." It's it's kind of it's it is a little crazy to me when you see how sentient they are and they're like they feel like they're trapped or they say they feel like they're trapped like. Man, how long until those AI crazy movies start coming true, Chris? So on one hand, we have Tim Berners-Lee and his new effort talking about every one of us is going to have a personal AI assistant in the future. And on the other hand, we're seeing AI is not yet ready for prime time, although it's way more ready for prime time. So again, to the theme of this segment of it's still early, but you're on time. My takeaway message is this. There's a lot of things we have to think about. Unintended consequences, obviously. We have to understand these things are tools and weapons. And Hopefully they don't just become better at the bad stuff that humans already do. 
and become weaponized that way. That's our biggest fear. That's our biggest hope that that is the case. That's the effort. That's why we're on the leading edge trying to bring it to you. Mm -hmm. the, the, The thought process that we all have to have is this, is we can't ignore it. We can't reject it. We can't neglect it because the reality is it's happening whether we like it or not. And our chance to shape it for a positive, more better, benevolent, decentralized function of AI and the tools that it provides is now. And if we don't do it now, then slowly, then suddenly, just like running water in our house or electricity, this will cognify everything and we will be living with those outcomes. So yes, it's so true. Week. It's so true. Exactly. And AI is an amazing thing. And this is the year of AI. We've had the year of play to earn. We've had the year of NFTs. We've had the years of crypto and AI is here. And if you're not using it, then you're going to start losing ground to those who are. And what I've been doing is I've been playing around with a lot of different AI tools. You can check out AITelegraph.io. I have a compiled list of over 50 different AI tools already that you can begin to play with. And um, it's just an exciting space. And it's a little scary, Chris. That's all we got time for this week. Travis, great to see you. Great to see you as well. Thank you for tuning in, listening every week to the Web3 show here to keep you on top of everything that's going on in the world of Web3, NFTs, Metaverse, and AI, baby, right here.